How's it going, everybody? Welcome to another great episode of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. I'm Jeremy Lesniak, joined by Andrew Adams, and today's episode is a word association. And I hope you enjoy these. And you know what? If you don't, that's fine, because we do. <laughs> uh, thanks for being here. Thank you for your continued support of Whistlekick and our mission to connect, educate, and entertain traditional martial artists of the world. How are we doing that? We're doing it with all sorts of things, from this show to Whistlekick Alliance, our offering for martial arts schools, to the bonus content we put out on our Patreon and products in the store. Use the code PODCAST15. It'll save you 15% on some sparring gear or a hoodie or a t-shirt. I have a t-shirt on. Me too. You have a Whistlekick t-shirt on. But you can't buy that You can't one. buy this That's one. a free training day. You could also come to one of our events. But instead of turning this into a big commercial about Whistlekick, just go to whistlekick.com, see all the things that we've got there, and uh, find a way to engage that brings more meaning to your life as a martial artist. Yeah. Whistlekick, so, martialartsradio.com, at Whistlekick on social media. I think that's it. Yeah. That's all we got to tell them. Cool. All right. Word association. So this is number... 72. 11. 11. Word association number 11. Okay. Uh, and I'm pulling my phone out because I have the words on my phone. I'm checking the mic. Say more words. Uh, more okay. words. Okay. We, we had some issues with the mic before we were, were actually our first attempt at recording this. So I'm a little... A little nervous. A okay. Little sensitive. Well, now you have me nervous. Is this doing it right? Okay. Okay. All right, here we go. Okay. So, uh, this word association. I'm glad this is our first recording for today. That's true. Uh, I'll tell from here. Has another theme. Okay. The theme is we are currently recording in Vermont. We are. Beautiful Vermont. It's currently, as of this recording, February. It is cold. It's cold. It's, it's snowy. snowy. It's, you know, that's kind of... That we signed up for this, this is where we live. Yeah. So today's word association is the winter edition. Ooh. Winter edition word association. So all of these words that I have on my list have to do with nowish. Nowish. Okay. okay. And for those of you who live in warmer climes, lucky. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right now. Yeah, I woke <laughs> up and I was like, why is it so cold in my house? Because it was in the 50s in my house. And uh, I looked outside, and it was because it was 10 degrees outside. I woke up this morning and realized, oh, shoot, last night I left a uh, thing of soda in my car last night. And this morning I was like, oh, whoa, is it going to go out there? And it wasn't. Luckily, it wasn't. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's cold. awesome. Well, I also live two hours south of you, so it's a little it warmer. It is a little bit colder. And I got home at midnight last night, so it was okay. only in my car for like six hours. Okay. <clears throat> Not so bad. All right. I'm glad you didn't have to deal with frozen slushy of soda. Well, that wouldn't be so soda bad, slushy. actually. Soda slushies are good. Yeah, if they're in a cup. Well, yeah. <laughs> All right. Ready? First word. Snow. Snow. Word association. You know, snow. snow is one of the most controversial things in New England. For those of you who don't live around here, you might not realize that there are a lot of people who live in New England who dislike snow. And I imagine that people in other northern climates also, some of them at least, don't like snow. And I find that fascinating because why would you live somewhere where such a large portion of the year is full of something that you absolutely hate? Unless you're a child and have no... Well, you sure. You can fix that. Sure. Yeah. Sure. But there are things like that within our training mm -hmm. that are divisive and are part of being in that sort of an ecosystem. And I'm not going to say which ones you should think of is this way, but for some people it's sparring or it's mm -hmm. form or it's basics or it's competition, right? That wherever it is you train, there's some aspect of your training that you really don't love, that you love the rest of it. And you see that part of your training as something you have to live with or get through. But just as snow creates this environment, those aspects of your training that you don't enjoy also create your training. And to try to cherry pick and say, oh, I can just remove this from the equation and have a better environment. What would happen if we instantly got rid of snow and 
let's say the temperature is cold enough to create snow here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We would be overrun with ticks. Yeah. Because ticks die down mm -hmm. over the winter. Uh, mosquitoes. We would have all these things that snow and the cold have become the natural predator too. Yeah. And if you remove them, it doesn't work. And you could say the same thing about forms. You know, if you take forms out, there are things within your training that you get from forms that you don't get elsewhere. And you really can't... I guess, the unintended consequences, I think that's that's kind of the word that I'm going with. Okay. So it'll be interesting to see how your definition of snow, not definition, you, how you're relating snow to martial arts will affect the other words, because the mm -hmm. next word is snowblower. <laughs> <sighs> you haven't lived until you've been out when it's 20 below zero and you've avoided the snowblower. Mm -hmm. the previous three storms, because you can get through it. <laughs> See, I don't do that. And you come home and you get stuck in four low in your large SUV <laughs> in the driveway. And now it's time. And it's way colder than it was the other times when you should have done it. Yep. So what's a snowblower? It is an efficient... Uh, self-sufficient mm -hmm. way of dealing with things that maybe you don't want to. So if we look at, if we relate this back to the previous word, if snow represents a thing that is controversial or uh, met with mixed reception within our training, a snowblower would be an efficient way of training those aspects so we can get rid of it. I'm sure there's somebody out there who enjoys shoveling snow. I don't know that person, but somebody out there probably does. And they would look at a snowblower and say, you know, this isn't as much fun. But for the people who don't like the snow, they're saying, you know what? I got to deal with this. I'm going to deal with this. This is the tool I'm going to use to deal with this. And that could be, if it's forms, maybe it's I'm not going to make myself do forms, but I know I'll do it at class. Mm -hmm. And I know that once in a while or every week or whatever, I'm going to do this thing that I don't really enjoy, but I know it's good for me. I don't want to run the snowblower, but I know that I've got to do it. Otherwise, getting in and out of my driveway becomes cumbersome. And I think we can look at those two kind of in that way. Okay. I don't know if there's much more I want to say. About. All right. So living in... Vermont or New England in the winter, there is a huge difference between a snowblower and a snowplow. Mm. So the next word is snowplow because you can't use the same definition because right. they are very different things. Yeah. Well, if a, a snowblower removes the snow officially, a snowplow is more efficient but a little less precise. Yeah, I have more control over where the snow goes with my snowblower than mm -hmm. I do with a snow plow. Snow plow, the snow can only go in one direction. That's forward. Mm -hmm. Snow blower, I can put it to the side. I can throw it up over things. And sometimes there's value there. In fact, actually, if you ran a snow plow at my house, there are very few places to put the snow. You'd have to back plow it. You'd have to do some really mm -hmm. funny things. Well, just where the snow would go. Yeah. Right. Because. Yeah. Can't go in front of the garage. Can't just mm -hmm. dump it out into the road. There would be a huge snowbank between the house and the, the warehouse there. So if a snowblower is that, oh, this is this is this is good. Yeah. I like this, and I like the way you ordered this. You know what? A snowplow is is when we cram for testing or competition. Oh, okay. Sure. There is an efficiency to it, but maybe not the best way to get it done. Mm. If you've tested in a school that has a bunch of combinations, uh, what a lot of Kempo schools refer to as techniques, you know, multifaceted techniques, or a school that has a bunch of forms, mm -hmm. you're probably familiar with cramming and going back through and making sure you remember all the things about them. Um, in my Taekwondo school, I would start six weeks out. That was my target. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
And you can make the argument six weeks is not really cramming. I see cramming as like when two, you've got two twenty weeks. and you only and you don't know four of them <clears throat> is. Hmm. Hey Jeremy, you're testing. <laughs> All right. I guess I got to learn these forms. All right, snowplow. And you get it done because you can move on to other things. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, and, and that's not to say that I don't know people who are wizards with a snowplow and they can do a beautiful job and sure. it looks great. But most people that run a snowplow, it's about rapidity. It's about, OK, I'm going to snowplow these 27 driveways before lunch. Right. Mm-hmm. You're getting in. There's 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 a lot of horsepower. It beats up the truck. Uh, yeah. All right. So we had snow, we had snowblower, we had snowplow. I've got two more snow words. I have a, I have a bunch more words, but two okay. more snow words. You want to take a guess what they are? <clears throat> Snowshoe. That was the next one on the list. Snowshoes. I know you. Um, if anybody's not been on a pair of snowshoes, just as a very rudimentary technology, they're fascinating. Because you go from... I'm falling through the snow to I'm walking on the snow. And then you realize how old this understanding is that if I distribute my weight Mm -hmm. across the snow, I can perform better. Well, if snow is that thing that we're trying to remove or get around or deal with, and it's uh, met with mixed response, snowshoes would be something that allow you to deal with that more easily. And so what is that in our training? It's got to be something that's at least mildly enjoyable. Because walking in snowshoes is kind of fun. Yeah, if you've never done it, it yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, I, I suppose if you were, you know, if it's 200 years ago and you're walking through the Canadian wilderness because it's your form of transportation, yeah, maybe less enjoyable. But certainly more enjoyable than not having them in that mm-hmm, car. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I'm not stumped. But I can see it from here. All right. Hmm. Music could be the snowshoes of training. Because if if I don't like sparring or I don't like forms or I don't like basics, and I, I've tested this when I've taught, putting some music on in the background completely changes the experience, changes the energy in the space. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can give people something to, I mean, you're a drummer. You get how important following a beat can be yep. in certain environments. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with that. The worst things I can imagine doing are better regardless of whether what it is with music. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. There's one more snow word on my list. You would have done snow shovel already. Yeah, I was too close to plow, so yeah. I didn't bother. Um, snowball. Snowball. This is the last, quote, snow word. Yeah. So. Um, snowballs are making <clears throat> a game out of snow. Whether you're mm-hmm. making a snowball and throwing it for yourself, to say, can I hit that tree, or you're throwing it at the dog or friends Your or brother. family. Um, snowball fights mm-hmm. don't have to be the only way you use snowballs, right? You can mm-hmm. you can make a snowball and roll it, and make a snowman. Mm-hmm. Sure, that's just what is a snowman? Three really big snowballs, or more if you're getting weird. Yeah, or two <laughs> if you made the first. If you ran out of time, could be. Um. Mm. You're making me work this morning. A snowball. Two minutes later. Uh, <laughs> is is that that um, 
It's a SpongeBob thing. Yeah, that's what I thought you were going. Couldn't find the reference in my brain. It's turning things into a game. Mm -hmm. If you've ever taught kids, you know that just by calling something a game and just by applying different energy to it, it changes it. And a snowball is looking at a clump of snow in a different way and saying, you know what? I'm going to find some enjoyment out of this. I've never seen anyone make a snowball and hate doing so. I've seen people get angry and throw it in response to someone else throwing a snowball, but sure. I've never seen someone just in and of itself make a snowball and say, I hate this. This sucks. Right. Uh, and games are fun. If you don't like forms, I can I, I can come up with half a dozen ways to make mm -hmm. forms fun by turning it into a game. Whether it's, you know, you're training by yourself or you're training with other people or, you know, group competitions. Snowballs are games. Yeah. The only time I've ever picked up snow to make a snowball and said this really sucks is when it's bad snow for snowballs. And those of you that live in climates where you don't have snow... There is good snow for snowballs, and there is bad snow. The mo it's the moisture <clears throat> content versus the volume. Yeah. So if if you have bad snowball snow, you need to hold it in your bare hands long enough. Yep, like this. That it melts a little bit, and then you can pack it. That's right. All right. So that was the last official snow word. But I saw okay. a bunch of other words okay. that are related to winter. Right. And the next word is salt. And we're talking winter edition, so we're not talking table salt. Right. We're talking road salt or driveway salt, mm -hmm. whatever. Did you know a lot of places out west, even in snowy places, don't use salt on the roads? Uh, I did. I did know that. I did hear that. Yeah. yeah. But here in New England, it's salt. It's or salt. A, a mixture of salt. And salt sand. and sand, or um, there's other stuff that they throw in. But we we think of salt in that context as the stuff they put on the roads to help melt the snow, mm -hmm. give us traction, etc. Or you have it in your house and you sprinkle it on your driveway. Yeah. But the concept is the same. So that's. The word. Um, it's a tool to mitigate the negative effects. Mm -hmm. Sparring gear. Mm, okay. If a lot of people don't like sparring, they don't like contact, they don't like getting hit, they are afraid of getting hurt, and that is what sparring gear is for. Best sparring gear in the world at whistlekick.com. It's true. Uh, <laughs> I had somebody write to me the other day, hey, can I drop off gear from so-and-so? He outgrew it. And I was like, just sell it on eBay. Mm. I know that this kid used that gear for years, and it still looks not new, but <laughs> yeah, we make great gear. Anyway. Um, yeah, I, I, th I think it's, it's protective equipment in general is yeah. where I would go with that. <clears throat> because for some schools, wearing shoes could be protective equipment. Mm -hmm. uh, mats can be protective equipment, right? Anything that mitigates the risk of injury or death in the context of training is road salt. All right, I dig it, I dig it. All right, uh, a frozen lake. Okay. Frozen Lake. I've almost got it. I, I can see it. I can... So a, a frozen lake is that thing that doesn't happen as often as you want it to. If you're a mm -hmm. snowmobiler or an ice fisherman, ice fisher, that's a, you don't have to gender it. Uh, or you want to play hockey out on the ice. Mm -hmm. If you don't know, much of the time, the lakes are not frozen enough to go on them. <clears throat> and you need to be really careful. And there are, every year, people die. Uh, I, growing up, I knew people who lost their snowmobiles in, in lakes because they, yep. they tried to skim over the open water or whatever. But it can be incredibly dangerous. Now, if it's a really really cold winter and that depends on where you are you might drive a vehicle out there mm -hmm. yep. and you got to be super duper careful and 
people lose vehicles. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine losing your truck in a lake in the winter? Definitely happens. It happens. So when we look at a frozen lake, it's a thing that until it's happened to a certain amount, it's useless. Mm -hmm. a, a lake that's that's frozen over, but you know, a half an inch doesn't really do anything for anybody. Yep, true. A lake that's frozen over 12, 18 inches. You can drive on that. You can you can do something with that. Mm -hmm. And you could make the argument that most of our training is that way. If I teach you one technique, you can't do a lot with that. If all I teach you to do is how to punch, <clears throat> or I mean, you, you've you've taught you've taught first day students. Mm -hmm. Sure, there's a um, I don't want to call it a rush, but there's an instinct to give them enough diversity of material that they can start to connect some dots for themselves. You know, if you start them out with high block and punch or low block and punch mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or any other block and punch, they can put that together, but they're not gonna be able to spar with it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. And so I, I think we're, there's a minimum threshold with ice, with frozen lakes mm -hmm. for it to be valuable. There is a minimum threshold in the number of techniques for us to be able to do something with it. Okay. Here in Vermont, one of the big winter activities, skiing. Skiing. Whether it's cross country or downhill, just skiing. can we throw snowboarding in with that? Yeah, right sure, sure, okay. sure. Yeah. All right. Um Making lemons out of lemonade, right? Mm -hmm. There are a huge number of people who I have contact with here in Vermont that have said, you know, if it wasn't for skiing, I wouldn't be here. If it wasn't for snowboarding, if it wasn't mm -hmm. for snowmobiling, right? Mm -hmm. Taking the snow and turning it into a recreation, they would not endure it. Because it allows them, one, to spend, to do something with the time. Yep. Yep. Uh, by the way, it can snow eight to nine months out of the year here. Not heavily, but yeah. There, there are people who don't take snow tires off their car. We actually don't have a law in Vermont that says you do. You can run snow tires year round. <clears throat> Making lemons out of lemonade. So what is that? I think it's a I think it's a mindset with our training. If the snow is the thing we don't like doing, whatever that thing is, it's saying, you know what? I'm gonna find some fun in that. I've known people who dislike sparring and they force themselves to compete in sparring at competitions mm -hmm. because they're trying to find a way to enjoy it, or they're trying to give themselves a goal, a target, uh, a reason to do it. Or to set a good example for others. Or to set a good example, right? And you could it could be the same thing. I've known plenty of people to do the same thing with forms in competition or weapons forms in competition. Mm -hmm. That to find a different way to look at it can be really important. We did an episode a long time ago. It was probably one of the most impactful episodes we've done for me. And it's the notion of martial arts as service. Mm. The idea that mm -hmm. if we flip our mindset to make it not just about mm -hmm. us and our personal growth yep. through yep. our training, that everything changes when we look at it. And so you could kind of bring an aspect of that in as well. All right. You um, jump ahead a word because you related it to the last one, studded tires, mm. which I have in my car right now. Mm. If you don't know, it's kind of like putting screws into tires so there's something more solid to bite into the ice. Uh, doesn't do a lot on snow, but it does a lot when it's when it's icy. Hmm. It's more risk mitigation. So if we did, if salt is sparring gear, we call it protective equipment. We broaden it to that. If salt is protective equipment, then Studded tires are your warm-up routine. It's your flexibility 
Mm. your mobility. Okay. It's getting your heart rate up. It's knowing how your body is that day. You know, as, as an aside, if you've been through any of the training programs we have, you know that one of the things I talk about it in the warm-up portion is you've got to check in with your body. You've got to know, hey, I guess I did strain my hamstring at class last night because I didn't warm up well enough and we were kicking high or whatever it is. And if you just assume that your body's good and you go instantly into things, you are much more likely to create an injury. You could say the same thing about driving a car without studded tires. You don't, you don't need studded tires, but they help. Mm -hmm. You don't need to warm up, but it helps. Makes a difference. Yep. And you're more likely to get more value out of your training when you warm up. You're more likely to get to your destination and at a and safer with less damage to your car and faster if you instead of snow tires. All right. Two more words. Okay. Ice scraper. This is the most depressing episode we've ever done. <laughs> oh. It's the next one. Long John's. <laughs> oh, okay. Being cold. Delete frostbite. I, I got in the shower this while you were yeah. on the road here. And... It was cold enough in my house that my hands had to thaw a little bit in the shower and it was uncomfortable. Oh, yeah. 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 All right. Ice scraper. It is necessary. It is a necessary tool. They cost like $2. Your credit card or driver's license is not a suitable ice scraper. But it works in a pinch. It works in a pinch. But you know what? If you live in New England and you don't have two ice scrapers in your car at all times, I, I, I think you're wrong. Uh, hmm. my favorite and most underrated training tool is a cell phone because it gives you the ability to see what you're doing mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's what an ice scraper does in the most literal form it allows you to see out of your car and if you cannot see out of your car and by the way if you travel to places with snow and, and you and you scrape out oh. like a like a like a little window like this to see out of don't do that please don't in fact i'm fairly certain that's illegal uh, also in many states now so you have to clear all of the snow from the top of your vehicle mm -hmm. so yep. just just a heads up <clears throat> it takes a few seconds to set up a phone or to have somebody f hold your phone filming your form or your sparring match but it's so incredibly valuable. And it's a tool that I've used in a lot of different ways. I've used it myself to train for competition because I know what I need to do. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I'm going to watch that. Okay. Let's do it again. Nope. I didn't get it. Okay. I got it that time. Let's do it one more. Yep. I got it that time again. And it dramatically improves the rapidity at which you can progress. If you have a tiny little window in your car that you're seeing out of, or none at all, you're probably going to drive a little tentatively. You're probably not going to go very fast. Yep. You're not going to make a lot of progress. But when you clear everything, all your windows, all of them, you can see what's going on. Yeah. You can not only be safe, <clears throat> but you can understand your place in the driving landscape, which all is right. valuable. Yeah. All right. Last word. Okay. And it is a game, but I want you to try and steer away from, well, martial art games, okay? okay? And the Winter Games, one that I think gets not enough coverage. I really enjoy it, to watch it. But everyone watches it at the Olympics, and no one ever watches it at any other time. And the game is, you know, curling? Correct. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Before I talk about curling... Do you know how incredibly resentful I am that it is easier to find curling on television than it is martial arts? Yeah, I get that. Do you know curling stones are made in New Hampshire and Vermont? I didn't. All of them? Pretty much all of them? Uh, I don't know that all of them, but I know okay. it's, a, it's a big... Which makes sense when you think of yeah. our landscape. Curling is one of those games. It's really simple to understand, mm -hmm. right? It, it's, it's the winter version of uh it's shuffleboard yeah that's the one i was looking for thank you wow my brain is not firing well today 
It's winter shuffleboard. Mm -hmm. I get it. I was listening to a podcast recently that was talking about curling. It's not a curling podcast, but the subject came up. And they were trying to describe it as the winter version of bocce ball. And I'm like, no, it's not. It's not bocce ball. Because bocce, you throw There's... it. No, bocce, you throw your things to get close to a I, thing. I see where they're going. Nah, yeah. definitely shuffleboard. Shuffleboard is a better yeah, for sure. analog, for sure. But it's more to it. there's more to it than that. All right. Curling is the two hours later breaking. Of martial arts. The breaking. Of because arts. it's a thing most people don't do much of, if at all. Mm -hmm. But it's easy to understand how successful someone is at doing it. And both catch a lot of flack. Mm -hmm. And it's also something that most when people that don't do it do it, they're like, oh, this is fun. Yeah. So if you've never done breaking... You break the board or the brick or the block, or you didn't. And you learn a heck of a lot very quickly mm -hmm. about how to do it. And people who don't do it make fun of it. And they find reasons to hate on it. Oh, you baked your boards. That doesn't do any board. Boards don't hit back. Ugh. Yes, they do. Understand physics. Um... I've never curled, mm -hmm. curlinged, curled, curled. Mm -hmm. Okay. You've never been curling. I've never played curling. I played shuffleboard once. I was like eight. Mm -hmm. It seemed fun. But I've done a fair amount of breaking and it is fun. I do dig it. And I think it has a place and it's something... That actually came up just in my mind last week that at some point I, I want to incorporate that into my curriculum for my students. You know, it's because there's enough value there. Are we going to do it frequently or on a routine basis? Probably not. But, mm -hmm. you know, maybe once or twice a year to help them understand their techniques. Sure. Because I'm watching some of them do some funny stuff. And even just a single board would would make a big difference for yeah. them in, in how they're applying force. So, yeah. Curling is breaking. All right. There you go. You heard it here first. Curling is breaking. That's it. Those are my words for Winter I, I, Association. I like that. I like the theme. On winter this Edition Word Association. Yeah. Well, if people want to contribute words or a theme or work with you for the next one, what would yeah. they do? Contact me, Andrew at Whistlekick.com. Mm -hmm. I'm Jeremy at Whistlekick.com. Convenient. Yeah, we make it easy. We try to, anyway. Our social media is at Whistlekick, WhistlekickMartialArtsRadio.com for transcripts and other stuff on the on the episodes. You know, you know what we should start doing? I know you, you drop bonus content at the end of some of the episodes. Sometimes, Which, yeah. if you don't listen or watch past these outros, you're missing out on those. We should drop some other bonus content on the website. Sure. All right. I don't know how we do that or what we do, but let's let's talk about that. Why do we want you to come to the website? Because we want you to stick around. And if you come to the website, there are things that are going to happen there. You'll probably sign up for the newsletter. You'll probably check out other episodes. You'll probably get more out of the episode by looking at the photos and the transcript. And uh, you'll probably remember an episode that you say, you know, what was that episode where they were talking about this? That You remember a few words, maybe even a sentence, a phrase, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you can search for it. And when you search on the website, you find things. So, all right. I appreciate you being here. Thank you for your support in our mission to get everyone in the world to train for just six months. If you want to help us out with that, do anything, anything that makes sense, do it. Join Whistlekick Alliance. Contribute to the Patreon with as little as $2 a month. Buy something, tell somebody, read something, share something. 
Thank you for being here. Until next time, train, train hard, hard, smile, and have, have a great, great day. day.